with the consistently poor to average exam scores you've been getting for a while now. You might be crumpling your paper or crying your eyes out due to frustration and you start to wonder why you are bad at math. And whether you're watching this video because you genuinely want to be better at math or you're just looking for justifications, I promise that you'll find the answer to your question and you'll get a pleasant surprise, so stay with me until the end of this video. Perhaps you're thinking that you just aren't talented in math. Or maybe since your parents tell you that they are bad at math themselves and they hate it so much, you somehow assume that you are genetically bad in math too. Or could it be that you just have bad mathematics teachers and therefore have a poor learning strategy? While all of these points are valid and deserve their own videos, we'll discuss something more primal that is common to all of them. Let's first talk about all the subjects you get exposed to. Surely, you're bound to have subjects that you simply love, and those that you hate down to the bone. Now I'll ask you this question. Are the subjects you love the same subjects you are good at? And are the subjects you hate the same ones you are bad at? Come on, think hard, imagine it, and be completely honest with yourself. Chances are, your answer is yes and yes for both questions, right? And nope, this is not a coincidence because it is deeply tied to your very own confidence competence loop. Huh? What is that? If you are initially good at something, competent, then you feel good about it. Confidence. And because you are confident at it, you'll do it more and become even more competent at it. A pretty simple and straightforward concept, right? Now, let's discuss the dark side of it. If you're initially faced with low scores in a subject like mathematics, then you feel bad about it. And because you don't like feeling bad, not confident, you avoid practicing solving math problems. And because of this, you become less competent in math. And on and on and on goes the vicious cycle. So, when your teachers or parents shove new lessons down your throat, that won't help you get better at math. In fact, it'll make you worse, anxious, incompetent, overwhelmed, helpless. And eventually, you just start to hate math down to the bone. But of course, not all hope is lost because you are now aware of the confidence competence loop. And I will guide you through how to exploit this awareness to help you become better at math. Let's say there is a third grader that is good at math. What do you think will happen if you suddenly give him grade 6 math exams? Highly likely, he'll lose confidence. Add some more insults to the mix like you suck or you're not as smart as you think you are and you'll destroy his confidence even more. Poor kid. But what if you do the opposite? Let's say there is a third grader that is bad at math. Or let's be more accurate here. A student that is bad at third grade math. What if you give him second grade math exams, first grade math exams, or even nursery level math exams? Chances are he will excel and easily get perfect scores. And more importantly, his confidence will skyrocket. Because of that confidence, he'll become more open to try something a little bit more challenging for his current level, which translates to more practice or more competence. Now that is actually what you call an intelligent practice strategy 
that harmonizes your intellectual and emotional growth. So dear students, don't feel ashamed when you feel that it's too much to handle when your teachers or parents bombard you with advanced math lessons. It's only normal to feel that way since that is not your current level. Confidence and competence complement each other and each person has a different learning pace. There is no shame in that. In fact, tell everyone about the confidence competence loop and how important it is for their own learning process. Or you can just share this video to spread the word faster. I hope you learned a lot about why you are bad at math in this video. And hopefully, you take it to heart that getting good at math has plenty of emotional aspects and it's not just purely logical like many people believe. If you enjoyed this video, then visit our channel. We have plenty of explainer and solve along videos to help you become better at math. So be sure to subscribe to teach me animated math and don't miss out. See you next time.